Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 24 of the Lico Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this problem. 790 Domino and Tromino, Tromino, Tiling. Uh, yeah, uh, hope everyone's having a good beginning of the holidays or whatever it is, um, maybe. Um, yeah, just enjoy. I have, hope everyone's just having, you know, a good weekend. Um, all right, let's get started. I don't really have much to say today uh, other than that. Um, I do need to go shopping a little bit right after this, you know, get get a, because of everything's closed during the the, uh, the holidays. So, you know, just making sure that I have everything I need. But okay, so let's take a look at this problem. Uh, and apparently I've done it before. I had to kind of reset it before. But this is, a, this is actually pretty common. Um, and it's kind of, also, to be honest, like a little bit nuts to see it as a medium problem these days, because I think, um, yeah, because I think mean, like it, it is just nuts because, um, yeah, it, it, it is kind of nuts because, uh, because I feel like the first time I've I've seen this problem and I've seen this problem a few times on outside of lead code and before lead code as well, and and which is why I mean that by the first time I've seen this problem was prior like. I don't know what year is it like close to 20 years ago and I was like wow <laughs> the first time I solved it by myself I think it was considered probably a hard problem um because people haven't seen it yet there's no you know it's not as common of a literature maybe it comes up in textbooks but if you don't you know if, you, if, it, if it didn't come up in your algo class it wouldn't have been a thing so the first time I kind of um was able to visualize it by myself and solve it by myself I was like wow I'm the smartest person in the world I am so good at dynamic programming you know uh but these days it's it's considered medium and everyone know, uh is I guess to some degree expected to know how to do it uh but I still think it's kind of <clears throat> uh tricky could be tricky and it's kind of just about the visualization and the recursive nature of the structure and just getting about your base cases right. I think these things are very easy to get wrong still. Um, but yeah, uh, okay, so let's get started. Um, I think they'll, um, yeah, so the first thing that we can do is just kind of define itself in, um, you know, with numer uh, not enumeration, but enumeration problems where you have to count the number of count of things, uh, or maybe you could consider it as a combinatorial problem, maybe. But either way, it's the same thing in just different words, which is a lot of the times it is just about thinking about a way to brute force it um, by counting all the possibilities, but in a way that um, either in this case, taking advantage of the uh, overlapping subproblems. Or perhaps in another case would be to, um, to uh, you know, figure out a way to enumerate them in a way that allows you to get rid of duplicates. Or not duplicates, but like, you know, functionally uh, same things, right? So in here, um, you know, I'm going to try to actually bring up a paintbrush thing. Uh, so I could kind of draw it out for y'all. But yeah, but basically now, you know, let's say you, um, you know, functionally you have a two by n, right? It's yeah, two, yeah, two by n board. So you know, you have something like, du, 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 you know, this is two, du, 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 du. and then that, you know, just all the way to the end, right? Uh, so basically, there really, you know, um, there are a couple of ways you can enumerate this for sure, but one and the way that I like to think about it is just how do you build, you know, how do you take one move at a time, almost like a game kind of thing, right? How do you take one move at a time? And the first uh, move is just to take, you know, just put one of the two, I call it domino, I mean, a domino, a two piece, and then just put it, oops, just put it vertically up, right? Let me change the color real quick. Oops. Just put it vertically up this way, right? So then in this case, now, before this is two by n, right? And then now one of the ways is just to put it, uh, put a vertical one here. And then now, what does that mean? Well, the, that means that for the rest of the way, you have two by n minus one, right? Um, yeah. And then of course the other way that you can do it is, is by, 
I'm just going to do, 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 dot, dot, dot here and then just draw the end of it, right? Um, the other way that you can do it, of course, is draw uh, horizontally, right? Of course, now you can say maybe now the two ways, you, I mean, we'll, we'll simplify this in a second, but you'll see that, you know, now you have a, um, a two by n minus two, but this is obviously a different shape, right? This is now a shape of say, do uh, do 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 right? Something like that, dot dot dot, right? Um, but where there's you know this piece me missing, right? Maybe I'll just leave it off. So then this is a different function. This is you can say this as okay. Well, um, how many how many ways are there to fill this out when you have a two by n minus two with two things sticking out of it, right? Um, and of course you can you can make some distinction if you like between this thing here and also the bot taking up from the bottom right but but you can see very quickly that you know um by by symmetry they should be equal to each other i'm not gonna go over the proof that much because i think yeah uh, you know whatever um but yeah and then of course the third way to do it and i i kind of ran out of space here <laughs> Is that you know? Let's just say you have th these things dot dot dot. I'm just drawing it on top because I, you know, it's using the tri triminals, right? I mean, obviously, if you if you do something like this, then you can't really fill it because you have just one thing le left out. So you would ha have to do it like this, or equivalently like this, right? So there are two ways to do it: this way or that way. And there's also two ways to do the other one, but we'll we'll talk about it in a sec, right? So now we just have to combine them. And oh yeah, in this case, you have um oh wait. i I can sorry, I can I drew myself confusion. Uh what I meant is this. <laughs> and uh the other side. Right. And of course, and then now you can say this in two ways. You could say this is and as long as you're consistent about it, this should be good. And minus two with one thing sticking out, right? Or something like that. You can also say it's two to the minus one with one thing missing. It doesn't really matter as long as you're consistent about it. Um, okay. And so those are uh, your 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 moves that you can do, and we'll go over them one by one. One thing that we can mix simpler is that for the stuff in the bottom, this part, um, there's only one next move that you can do, right? In both these cases, you have to have to put a fitting here or here. So this is equivalent to saying, just taking this here, and then now you have a fully completed n minus two. So that's one optimization we'll make. The other stuff, we can kind of talk about it as we come. So that's basically the idea, really. Um, it's just kind of figuring out all the possibilities and then, and then enumerating them in a way that is consistent. And also, of course, use some, using some dynamic programming or memorization um, to to make it so that you don't uh, do duplicate work. And of course, we send the, we, I did the mod thing, but you know, remember to sing the mod song as I always do. I go mod, 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 mod. It's not a good song, but it's just for long enough for me to remember to type it in so I don't forget it because I just noticed this. Um, okay. So yeah, so then now there are two ways, right? Like we said, so this is, I don't know, let's just call it even. I don't know if this is even, but um, even, yeah. And then you have like an N that is here, right? And then if N is equal to zero, then we return one because there's one way to do zero pieces. That's just like how a lot of these things work. Um, and then what, what can you do, right? Um, well, one way is like we said, we do the vertical, right? So count is equal to zero. So can we do vertical and it's N minus one because you have a vertical piece, right? And then if n minus two is greater than or equal to zero, then you can also change it to the other thing. But um, we want to do even of n minus two, right? And this is putting two horizontal ones. So then now you you you, you get rid of a two by two block. So now you're 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 two fewer than before, right? And then of course, um, if also if n is minus two is greater than zero, then we can also do the odd pieces, right? So we we do the thing. So then we go do 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 do. And then we have an odd, right? Uh, and odd, eh, maybe the naming is terrible, to be honest. But the odd, I'll, I'll actually define it, which is that um, a full 2 by n uh, shape, maybe? Shape with an extra odd piece sticking out, right? 
Um, and in this case, we actually have to, we can do it twice, right? Because we, the two trimino, uh, same stuff is hard. There's two of these things that can fit. So this is actually two times this, right? Or you could just add it twice, maybe if you like, I don't know. But yeah, if n is equal to zero, then actually in this case, we return zero, right? Because that means that we have no nothing left, but we have one piece sticking out. So that's actually a zero. So you have to be careful about your base cases. Um, otherwise, count zero is zero. Um, and of course, actually, I, I kind of messed up here because we have to remember to mod. I'll just put a mod here for now. Um, and you might actually even have to mod after every addition, but I'm not going to do that just because this is Python. I could be a little bit lazy. And this will only go times four times mod anyway in the way that we did it. And you can prove it to yourself. So it won't be, it won't be unbounded, but just be not as tight bounded. Um, okay, so then now we think, and maybe this is time to kind of bring back the paint. You can kind of just have to order cases here. Um, okay, let's erase this for a second. Right. So then now you have this shape, right? Now you have this shape do, 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 with one thing sticking out. And of course, like I said, it doesn't matter. No, by symmetry, it could be up or down. Um, so then now what, right? Um, so there are actually more than one move that you can do. The, the obvious one is just doing this and then now you then and now this is a even thing because now you have nothing sticking out and then the other way to do it maybe I'll choose another color is just by using a a, a two piece a domino and then just doing over and of course in this case now you have to you know be careful about it but this is basically it goes from this is n right so then now it goes to n minus one right just to be clear because it's n four ones and one sticking out so then now you can say this is n minus one, but odd. Okay, I mean, maybe the smarter people of you at home could have done it in your head, but for me, I always find it to have, you know help with the visualization, and I have no patch and stuff like this for that reason. So uh, so yeah, so there are only two ways to do it. One is um, if we took a three piece, right? So then that's a even n minus one. Yeah. Um, and that's if n, well, I guess n should be greater than one or greater than or equal to one. So yeah, that should be good. And then the other thing is if it's just odd minus one, right? Because now you're taking a horizontal domino and that's pretty much it. Oops. And then here we start off because we have even because we don't have anything sticking out of n. And then we could give it a spin, see if this at least works. Okay, so this works, but of course it's going to time out because you can, you know, uh, if you have any experience with dynamic programming, you'll see that um, we're doing multiple recursions and yeah, that's going to branch out to be exponential pretty quickly. Um, of course, then we also, yeah, I guess I'll do the memorization first. But uh, you know, the thing that I always say about memorization, and I think that uh, sometimes people are a little bit quick about, um, a little bit quick about just like, you know, memorizing everything. But there are some ob observations that you should make sure that it does, which is that one, you, well, f make sure that it is bounded and that you reuse the, the uh, reuse the, the sub problems. Because if you don't reuse the sub problems, then you're caching for no reason. You're just doing extra work. Um, and it just gives you overhead, even though I guess asymptotically it should be the same, right? Um, complexity. But yeah, but basically now for every end that we put in here, we get the same answer. So that allows us to do memorization. There's no side effects. There's no uh, uh, stuff like that, right? So then here we go, you know, has even cash. This is good to say four times n plus one, maybe. Uh, yeah. And then now even cash is equal to none times n minus oh, n plus one. And of course, yeah. Here, and this is pretty standard stuff that I, you know, if you have watched this a few times on, on my, my video a few times, you see this is basically what I do uh, every time. Uh, yeah. But basically the idea here is just so that we don't um, we don't do duplicate work and and if we've already 
seen it before, we'll return it. I know that I have a typo. Uh, if, you, if we've seen it before, we'll return it. If we haven't, then after we calculate it, we store it down. And of course, we have to do the same for R. Don't, eh, maybe you could be a little bit lazy. I think technically you could be lazy because um, because this, eh, I think it becomes n squared by accident if you're a little bit lazy. But uh, but I will do it. Don't worry. I'm just kind of I'm just curious. Uh, as even I can type into this. Okay, there we go. I think technically you might not have to. It'll just be like n squared instead of um, yeah, for a reason that I'm not gonna get into. But you can try to prove to yourself at home, and I might even be wrong to be honest. But yeah. Uh, but the TLDR is that we should do the same for the art side. Um, and you can see that this is 322 millisecond. And without that, then we would have been probably timed out. Uh, and I'm a little bit lazy, so I'm just doing a little uh, lovely copy and paste. And that did it. Oops, not this one. I wonder if I could do walrus uh, operation on that. Hmm. But that would be new, so hmm, I don't know. Yeah, see if that's any faster. And you can see that it ran a little bit faster, though. You know, lead code timing is always a little bit tricky anyway. Yeah, um, looks like I did it a year ago. I did it mostly the same way, probably. Oh, I say sticking out. Uh, hopefully the, the drawing is a little bit better for visualization. But yeah, um, this is going to be linear time, linear space. The way that you can see it is that there's only linear t number of inputs to here, and each input uh, takes over one time. So yeah, and same for here. And in, in aggregate, you know, that's going to be linear time, linear space. Um, I'm going to call it a day. Like I said, uh, I need to go shopping before I starve to death during the weekend. So yeah. Um, stay good, stay healthy, to good mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye. And also have a happy weekend, holidays, everything. I'll see you before then, though. Bye-bye.